Hey guys, I'm Tom of Tech Chap, and I've been waiting for this. The new and improved Insta360 X4. Well, I've been using the X3 for a couple of years almost. It came out in late 2022, so I guess about 18 months. And now we have a new one, refreshed. Although from the outside, you wouldn't really know, except for the fact that it says X4 right there. Really, it's all about what they've done on the inside with a new AI chip unlocking a whole range of new options, including 8K video for the very first time, uh, also 5.7K at 60 FPS, previously topped out at 30. We get better image quality all round. It's uh, much more responsive. You can also now shoot 72 megapixel 360 photos because we've got that 8K resolution. We get longer battery life, new modes. So looking like an absolute tourist, I roamed the streets of Rome, which was a whole lot of fun with the X4. And and I'm probably the first person ever to record the Colosseum and the Vatican in 8K 360. But first, a big thank you to Insta360 for sending this out ahead of launch and also for partnering with me on this video. So I should say all these extras are, well, extra, they're optional. You're absolutely fine with just buying the X4 by itself, but I would definitely recommend the invisible selfie stick to start with, maybe an extra battery as well, especially if you plan to shoot in 8K. And also while the X4 is water resistant, we have the same IPX8 resistance as the X3, and it will survive a dunk in the pool, and it transpires several dunks in a surfing wave pool for a proper surf in the sea, for diving, and just for more intensive activities in the big blue wet thing, perhaps a dive case is worth the investment. And you do have a lot of options. You've got this 10 foot tall or three meter uh, extendable well, selfie stick, I guess you could call it. And I looked like a complete knob walking around uh, with this in Rome, although I got some absolutely fantastic shots that you just couldn't normally get because of the crowds. Shots that perhaps a drone could get, but there's absolutely no way you could get away with using one of those. And it compresses back down to that. It really is quite compact. But as I say, I think your first accessory should be the invisible selfie stick. You can see the size difference there when you screw it in. And as you can see, we've got this little screw thread mount underneath there so you can just pop it onto any sort of gorilla pod mount or you know a lot of gopro mounts can also be used with this because of the size of it you can't actually see the stick in the frame so sometimes you do look like you're just holding nothing and i'd love if there was like an ai way of replacing it with a I don't know, bottle of beer or a glass of wine or something so you're just sort of walking around with your beer the invisible selfie stick because you can hold it at arm's length you can stick it out your car window probably the best thing to start with and then perhaps a car mount uh, so you can pop it on your bike or your car and get some cool shots then maybe this guy so you can get some crazy sort of high drone shots and then you've also got the bullet time accessories you have a lot of options but you can just start with this don't get too overwhelmed at first You can also now replace the lens guards if you scratch or damage them, and you've got a standard and also a premium option with higher quality scratch resistant tempered glass. They also bunged a massive micro SD card in my goodie bag, which you slot in here beside the battery in this little compartment, and it will take a long time to fill this up, even with 8K footage. You'll definitely run out of battery first. But that's where a second battery is helpful. You can just pop it out and swap it with that. And of course you can charge it via the USB-C port under that little flap there. Very nice. Press the on button and almost instantly the screen wakes up. And if it's your first time, it'll give you a handy walkthrough of how to use it. And I can tell you already, just swapping around and turning it on and switching modes, it feels a lot faster and more responsive than the older, slightly laggy X3, thanks to this new processor. So there is a lot to talk about with the new X4, but to give you a gist, Insta360 gave me this very handy little one sheet of the features for the X4 and also a couple of pro tips on the back. You can always pause the video at this point if you want to sort of read that in detail, uh, but I feel like that's a little bit cheating. Let me show you what's new and why you might want one of these. So first of all, what is this thing? Well, if you've used the X3, which came out in 2022, this will all feel very familiar, which is a good thing because it can be a little bit overwhelming at first, figuring out how the hell to use this thing. Think of it like a regular action cam. This is Insta360's Ace Pro. I actually reviewed this uh, a couple of months back. Really, really fantastic action camera, and I like the flip out uh, screen here. But obviously what makes this stand out is the fact that we have two lenses, one on the back, 
one on the front. And with a clever bit of software stitching the two together, you can capture almost seamless 360 video. But also like their action cameras, we have their fantastic flow state stabilization, tons of shooting modes. You've got different fields of view, lots of accessories you can mount it to. And that's kind of the point of this. It gives you almost limitless filming possibilities because you're capturing everything around you at the same time. So panning around on the X4 screen as you're filming, or more likely afterwards in the Insta360 app on your phone or the desktop studio program, you can reframe the footage however you like. Make it horizontal for YouTube, vertical for socials. You can set keyframes and manually pan around the footage to get the shot you want. And not only can you now capture in higher resolutions and higher frame rates than before, but just as importantly for retaining that quality, you can now export in 4K at higher bit rates. This previously topped out at 1080p. Max out the export settings and you can get some stunning looking footage from this. But remember, while this is an Insta360 X4 and you can shoot 360 video, you don't have to. What you can do is press this little button down here, go from 360 to single lens, and here you can shoot photos, videos, me mode, uh, loop recording, free frame, all that good stuff. So you can also just shoot with one lens, which turns it into a bit more of a traditional action camera. And now with the X4, you can shoot single lens at 4K 60, up from 4K 30 last time. And this is best for POV shots, like biking or surfing or driving or walking around. And you just want to capture one direction and not worry about reframing a full 360 video. Me mode also makes a return, but now at 4K, and this uses AI to track you, just you. And it's best used with the invisible selfie stick stuck out in front of you. So again, no editing or reframing needed. It's just you and your lovely face. And that's what I really like about this, that versatility. You can just shoot regular content, you know, POV, 16 by nine videos for your YouTube video like this and get some unique perspectives. But then you've got all the craziness with the AI edits that can either look really cool or perhaps a bit gimmicky. And the truth is you might not use this all the time and maybe just for a handful of shots, but for something that fits in your pocket, for me at least, this is absolutely worth having in your creative arsenal. So that's the idea, but you could do pretty much all of that with the X3. What the X4 brings to the party, among other quality of life improvements, is the ability to shoot in 8K video at 30 FPS and also 5.7K at 60. Now shooting in 8K will drain the battery a bit faster and I would only recommend it in really good lighting. But you can see here, 5.7K versus 8K, the high resolution gives you a sharper and less noisy image, which means you can zoom in further while retaining more detail. So for static shots, vlogs, walking around, exploring, generally slower paced content, and you have good light, 8K is a great new option to have. But then for sports, for driving, faster paced activities, you'll want to use the new 5.7K 60 option. Double the frame rate of the X3, and this feels like the sweet spot for image quality, frame rate, and you can get slow motion out of it. Although I would definitely drop down to 30 FPS if you are in lower light for better image quality. Everything else, all the other settings, I left pretty much as it comes. Standard color mode, medium sharpness, but you can tinker and play around with all this. And I also appreciate while you can switch between ultra, mega, and de-warp field of views for varying levels of fisheye distortion for your shots, whatever you've chosen as your recording, you can switch between all three afterwards. You're not locked into it. And really the hardware is only half the story, the software, the AI tracking, the stabilization, and the fantastic Insta360 app, which can make editing as simple as pressing one button with the AI doing the rest. But you've also got quick and pro modes, giving you more and more granular levels of fine tuning. There's also a new motion ND option, which adds a kind of motion blur and can give you shots like this, which is an 8K time shift that I recorded with motion ND turned on. And it just looks a lot sleeker and more polished. And you've also got the Insta360 Studio app, which is available on Windows and Mac. And also now you can actually uh, import files from the Insta360 X4 straight into Premiere Pro. You need to download a plugin and do a couple of things, but there's a really easy guide for that. I'll leave a link below. But you've got tons of other mode options like time shift and time lapse. You've got bullet time. There's also an active HDR video mode, which is great for capturing better dynamic range, especially if you've got really bright highlights like the sun in the frame. Now, if you're wondering how you actually get your files off this thing, well, there's a bunch of different options. The main one most people will probably use is just with your phone, with the Insta360 app. You can connect to this over Wi-Fi and then download your files that way. What you can also do is buy one of these, which is a quick reader, and you take out the micro SD card in this, pop it 
in there. And then you've got a lightning port connector and a USB-C, which you can plug straight into your phone or laptop and then just directly transfer the files, which is a bit faster. It also supports faster file transfers. There's new voice and gesture control support. You can connect it to your Apple Watch or Garmin Watch for GPS tracking and stats for the X4. And finally, while we do have a mic built in here, and also there's a little speaker there as well, I would definitely suggest pairing this with a nice Bluetooth mic uh, to get the best audio quality with your video. So that is the new Insta360 X4. And when it launches today, as I'm posting this, April 16th, it'll cost you $499, which is a hundred more than the X3. So this is coming at a bit of a price premium, but it is an incredibly versatile bit of kit. And while I'm not gonna use it for every shoot all the time, I'm definitely gonna be putting this in my camera bag and taking it with me everywhere I go, just for those fun extra shots that you can't normally get. My only gripe is they haven't actually changed the sensor size. Yes, it's high resolution, you get more options, it's higher image quality because of that. Because as with any action cam, you really do need good lighting to get the best image quality. But what do you think? Tempted to buy one? Definitely check out the new 8K Insta360 X4, and I'll drop a link in the description below. And also, if you did enjoy this video or found it helpful, then a little like and subscribe would be fantastic, because I did fly all the way to Rome to make this video. It's a tough gig.